Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to be working on an iPhone 12 Pro that was sent here because it will not turn on. This phone has been from the United States all the way to Paraguay and then sent all the way back to the United States again. And here I have it on the bench today. I'm gonna to read to you what it is the customer says. Phone fell on the floor. Phone was opened by a gentleman in Paraguay and he recommended we send the phone to you so the phone is already opened. So here we are looking at this phone exactly as it was received. First, we have the screws, yeah, like that, laid out on a piece of paper. Now, full confession, I've actually already had the logic board out of this package and looked at it, and to be 100% honest, that's all I'm really cared about here. You know, I have not looked at the housing yet. We'll get to that logic board here in just a split second but let's have a look at the housing. Let's just see if this may offer any clues. I'm gonna to have to cover up the tag here on the back of it. Uh, you know, I actually didn't look at that housing before beginning this. That might, might actually be helpful to see what's been annihilated on the logic board. Let's just kick that aside. All right, drum roll please. Let's have a look at the logic board then, shall we? I have not looked at the bottom board. I've actually only looked at the top board. It did arrive separated. So having a much closer look at this logic board, it really does not look like there is a whole lot of damage. And that is, you know, looking at the top board. So the board itself looks to be in pretty good condition. It's already had all of the stickers peeled off of it. One thing that made me a little bit uncomfortable is that it's already missing, you know, the glue around NAND, but we can tell that um, the guy that did this, he, he had carved around NAND some, but he stopped short and didn't actually try to remove NAND. So looking at the bottom board, it doesn't look like anything at all has been done on this thing. Uh, a lot of the thermal compound is still there. And since this is not a United States variant, it's missing a couple of connectors. We don't have this connector down here. And also there's some antenna equipment missing from the bottom of the board. I'm sure everybody working on these just loves this soldered on 5G antenna flex cable, right? So we don't have that to deal with on this model. Now, the symptoms that we have here on the top board are just a little bit disturbing. Uh, the symptoms are quite vague. I'm gonna show you exactly what it is that this board does. I'm gonna get the power supply on the screen. So my iPhone 12 DC power supply lead decided to self-destruct on me the other day. So I'm gonna be doing this by hand. I'm gonna hook up a ground probe. Yeah. And then for the positive lead, I'm just going to touch it and hold right here. So you can see this board drew just a, a quick 50 milliamps of current and then back to zero, that's normal. And then now to prompt it to turn on, I'm gonna have to hold that lead there with my right hand and I'm gonna bump the boot pin over here with my left hand. So to do that, we're just gonna hold one side on ground. Hang on, let's try this again. So to do that, I'm gonna hold part of my tweezers on ground and touch the Hang on, I ain't get nothing. Did I touch the wrong pin? All right, one side on ground. What? Okay, let me just touch somewhere that I know is ground. Still get nothing. It popped off. How am I supposed to ever do this for a living if my ground probe won't stay on? So then, reattaching the ground probe, and now we're gonna bump the boot prompt button here in one, two, three, boot. You can see this board goes 80 milliamps, 120 milliamps, dead. That's what we get, it is ridiculously vague. Let's do that once more time, one more time I mean. Here we go, boot prompt, 80 mil, oops, my, my tweezers slipped off, they has slipped off. But still, 80 milliamps, 130 milliamps, dead. And just for good measure, we'll do the third time. Only this time I'm gonna be sure to hold it steady. 80 milliamps, 120 milliamps, that part's normal. Still holding the boot button. Wait, now it's gonna boot? What? Are you kidding me right now? Dude. 
<laughs> I tell you what, if I want something really unexpected to happen, all I have to do is click record here and click record here. And then it's nuts. Everything, I mean, this board is now showing a normal boot sequence and I just don't really have words for that. So let me hook up a screen. It is quite possible that there's something going on here that, you know, it's hanging by a thread and me pushing and moving around and stuff is what actually got this to start. So I'm basically, I'm just going to be doing the same exact thing again, only this time with a screen connected and if this board will start, I'm going to move straight for, and I mean straight for creating a backup because we can get a backup on this one without the need for that bottom board. So to test run this, I'm going to hook my ground probe up here. Huh? I'm going to prop this screen up here temporarily like that. I will connect the DC power supply like that, 50 milliamps zero as it should be. And now I'm gonna press the button to boot. All right, here we go, one, two, three, boot. We are drawing 80 milliamps, 120 milliamps. Keep holding, 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 zero. 80 milliamps, 120 milliamps. Booting. Started the boot, but then it quit. It actually quit as soon as I let off the board. There is something broken on this board. Let's try that once more. I'm trying to, I, I let go with the tweezers but I'm continuing to hold pressure on the top of the board. And as soon as I let pressure off on the top of that board, we're back to zero. Very interesting. So I'm going to try to do this again, only this time without letting the pressure off of it. And like, seriously, I have to be double jointed and ambidextrous and dyslexic and every other sort of thing you can ever imagine to pull this off. I should just get a battery hooked up, shouldn't I? Let's do this one more time. I think I'm going to probably try to clamp the board and let something continue to hold pressure on it. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Boot. Come on, baby. 130, zero. Now, I haven't moved. Maybe I lost the connection. Okay. Hold a little tighter. Ugh, I lost it that time. I'm about to get it clamped into a housing and just go straight for data. Are my tweezers dirty? Let me flip them over. One thirty. I've got a normal boot signature. Now I can't move to show you this because if I do, I know it's going to turn off. I'm going to peek at the screen. It's already off. <laughs> All right, let's get this camera out of the way. I'm grabbing a somewhat known good iPhone 12 housing. So the battery voltage that I'm working with here on my so-called known good battery is at 3.9 volts. That is an acceptable voltage. So let's see what I can get here. I'm going to hook this thing up to a battery so that I don't have to contort quite as much. Okay, I'm just applying some Kapton to the bottom of the board so that nothing in the housing shorts it out. All right, so here's what I got. I have an iPhone 12 Pro top board, no bottom board, top board only. 
inside of an iPhone 12 housing. The 12 and the 12 Pro have the exact same dock flex, and also the front flex is the same, and the iPhone 12 screen is the same as the 12 Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead now and connect this top flex. We actually, I only need that so that the screen doesn't go so dim I can't see it immediately after boot. So I'm gonna hook that up. There we are. Hook the screen up down here. And now I'm gonna connect a battery, which I know is 3.9 volt. Come on now. All right, so I've got the battery connected, charge port, everything is connected. And now, since I learned that a light amount of pressure on the top of this board makes it boot, we're gonna slip a clamp in there. Right about there. Hang on, I don't wanna do anything too ridiculous. What's going on here? Might actually try to get me, yeah, let's uh, let's at least try to get one spacer under this end of the board. I can live with that. Okay. And this time, instead of trying to get under the screen with my clamperoo, I'm gonna to try to go over the top. So here we go. Like that. All right, so now <laughs> we have the battery hooked up, charge port hooked up, power button is hooked up as it should be, and I've got a clamp on it. Now I'm gonna hold the button to boot. And one, two, three, boot. <laughs> Apple logo. This is one of those videos that I'm going to have a hard time publishing. Have to, I'm going to have to blur that lock screen wallpaper. Wait, you can't see it anyways. Okay, so this thing booted up to the lock screen. I have working touch, and I'm just like, I'm vibrating after this because I was almost positive this was going to require a swap. Okay. I am going to go ahead. I have to stop this video. I have to move toward getting a backup and I'll be back to blab in a moment. I can't talk anymore. This needs to get the data off of it right now. Nothing touch or breathe on this bench. Okay, I have got the backup on this phone. It's actually running. I've gotten extremely lucky that I didn't have a DC power supply lead for this board because that caused me to, to push on the board a little bit more. This is a board that I use for doing CPU swaps and this one has actually been through more than one customer now. And I had originally intended on moving the chips from this phone here that I'm trying not to breathe on over to this board for recovery. And if we look near the top of the board, like what all do we have up here? Because I've got my clamp clamped right up here on the outside. We've got our NFC F and NFC PIC, which you know I believe is our NFC and then NFC power IC. I'm just trying to decide if we have anything power related up here that would prevent this thing from turning on without a clamp on it. Because when I apply pressure up here on this spot on the customer's board, it's enabling it to turn on, which is something that I just sort of figured out on accident. Now, it's not a surprise that I have a board that can be clamped to turn on. That's really common on some of the older models with CPU faults like um, iPhone 6 with Error 9. Um, that's a phone that many times I was able to clamp the CPU and get the data off of it. Okie dokie, I have got all of the data transferred off of this phone and now it is safe for me to breathe on it. And what I would like to do now is remove the clamp and see if this phone will power off immediately. I'm actually not even sure why I'm calling it a phone. It's more like a Frankenstein splintered conglomerate of things. So as you can see, this thing by some miracle or actually by my 30 cent clamp is 
is still up and running. And I mean, they're just the top board, spacer under it and clamped. And here we go. I'm going to remove the clamperoo in one, two, three. Is it going to stay on? What? All right, let's turn it off. Up, down, power. Slide to power off. <laughs> well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Well then, let's hold the button down to boot and one, two, three, boot. Seriously? Well, I mean, what can I say? The top board is sitting here and it is now running. Um, I'm able to unlock the phone, slide the power off. All of those things are working. Thankfully, the iPhone 12 model, it has all of the chips that we need for getting data just on the top board alone and the bottom board is not needed. Um, I guess all, I mean, I guess what's going on here is that my 30 cent clamp has completely and totally repaired this motherboard. I mean, it is basically good as new now. It really is just working now, huh? So anyways, that is going to be the end of this video. I really thank you all for watching. If you like this type of thing, feel free to subscribe and um, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody. Okay, it is now the next day and I'm just getting everything finalized here. I'm actually in the process of reassembling the board and then reassembling this phone because I'm not a complete monster. And I have got to show you what it is that I just found. I have found the reason why this board was fixed using nothing but a 30 cent clamp. Have a look at this. I wonder if anybody else during the beginning part of this video seen this, whereas I overlooked it. There are some chips in NAND here that I did not immediately notice. However, that's actually nothing to do with the problem. Have a look right over, oh my goodness. Look at this in the corner of this board, look at this. That whole top board is split in half and here I am with it sitting on a board heater and I'm getting ready to apply a little bit of heat and float this thing back together and I overlooked that. So that is a downside of what I get into sometimes whenever I'm recording these videos. Sometimes I will overlook the silliest things because I'm distracted by camera equipment and, and lights and, and, and everything else. So I haven't floated this back together yet. I want to look, I got to look at the bottom of this now. I want to look right there in the crack. Oh yeah, that's cracked all the way through. Look at, would you just look at that? That board, it is split all the way through. Unbelievable. That is just completely unbelievable. Who knows how many dozens of traces are inside that board that me clamping it just happened to line back up and not short together and oh wow. Well, I'm going to keep to my word and I am going to go ahead and fully reassemble this phone, but it will be an absolute complete total miracle if this thing boots afterward. Whoa. Holy smokes. Alrighty then, so I have got this phone fully reassembled and needless to say, it is back to not being able to power on. I cannot believe that I overlooked the fact that this split board was actually split. So what this means is that my 30 cent clamp didn't fix anything. Can you believe that? Unreal. Anyways, I also want to let you all know that I made a mistake as to where this phone came from. Um, while I was running the backup with 3U tools, I noticed that the sales region for this phone was France slash Germany. So I really don't know that this phone went to the United States before going to Paraguay. However, I do know that it came from the United States to me after going to Paraguay. So uh, anyways, this is going to be a happy customer. They're going to get a flash drive that has a full encrypted iTunes backup. And it's also going to have an exported slashed parsed version of the data that they're able to browse through on a computer. And uh, not much more to say about this one other than holy smokes. Unreal. You know how many phones this clamp has recovered? I've lost count now. I mean, this thing, oof, 
30 cents. The return on investment on this clamp is unbelievable. So anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.